Hey guys, me again. Uh, so today I'm going to make you a little video uh, to start explaining to you how to do, I guess, some actual design for the canoe, how to validate the thickness and things like that. So this will be applicable, I guess, once we're done uh, making the bending moment diagrams and the shear, mo the shear force diagrams. So, uh, you guys don't have to start working on this right now. I know I gave you guys a lot of stuff to do, so keep working on that. Once all that's done, we can work on this. But just to give you an idea. So I guess uh, we'll start with some solid mechanics, I guess. So Thomas, listen up. I know you're taking that class. Um, <clears throat> okay. So we have the boat. And we have a bending moment diagram, or our bending moment envelope, as we figured it out last time. Now, how does the boat resist this bending moment? Well, it's not sort of a boat. How would a square section resist this bending? So let's say we want to bend it. We'll bend it downwards. Well, first, I guess. Let's start looking at how it would deform. So let's say I put some loading on the top here. Kind of like the boat. Well, you guys can picture how it's going to bend. It's going to kind of go like a smiley face. Right? And so what's happening to the... Let's take a cross section here. So this cross section be over here. So if you look like a fiber on the outside here, you can see that like in the bending it's getting squished. So it's getting put into compression. And on this side it's getting pulled apart and it's going into tension. And in the middle here, there's actually a spot called the neutral axis where it's neither in tension nor compression. It's neutral. So at this cross section, um, if I kind of plot the deformations here, you get the top here, which will be in a lot of compression. This is strain. So the deformation divided by the length, normalized by the length. So here we'll have a lot of compressive strain. And here we'll have a lot of tensile strain. And then uh, this spot here, like I said, is a neutral axis. Now, how does... Okay, cool, that's strain. But how does this resist the bending moment, right? We have our bending moment. Let's say this bending moment diagram is like this or something. I don't know. And this value is like 10 kilometers or something. Great. Well, this is strain, cool, deformed. But how does it resist this? Well, using a nice, famous Hooke's Law, I guess, Hooke's Law, uh, you know that the strain can be related to a force using the modular elasticity. So pretty much the strain times the modular elasticity is the force, I think, or is the stress, and times an area is a force. Yeah, that makes sense. So let's, we don't know what the modular elasticity of the boat is, but that doesn't matter. We're not looking at the boat yet, we're looking at this. So took these strain values and multiply them by the modulus of the elasticity, we'll get uh, s stress in megapascals or something like that. So it would look the same thing, but here instead of having a compressive strain and a compressive ten a, a tensile strain, we have some kind of compression force, which is usually negative, and some kind of tensile stores, which is positive. So this I is... Um, in like kilonewtons per meter squared. So it's like applying on the cross section. So uh, I'll explain this. This is a cut here, and this is a neutral axis, like I drew it. And you can picture it. Uh, this is hard to draw. It's a stress, right? So it's over this area. So this is like this stress is acting on this area, and this stress is acting on this area. So if I take this, this stress value and I multiply it by this area, I take this stress value and I multiply this area, what do you get? Well, 
you get stress times an area as a force, right? So you would get uh, one force like this, kilonewtons, and another force like this, or the other way. I don't really care. It's a convention. It doesn't matter. Right? So these stresses acting on this surface creating a force, and I have two forces, one in the front, top, one in the bottom. And now, this might look familiar to you guys, I guess. This is a, a moment couple. So, this for if I take the summation of moments about here, uh, let's give some numbers just to make things nice, I guess. Let's say this is 5 kilonewtons, and this is 5 since it's symmetric, and these are 1 meter. This is one meter from here to here and here to here. And I take some additional moments about this point. I'm running out of space here. Let's get rid of a nice let's get rid of this. Okay, I take some additional moments about that point. Well, what's some additional moments about that point? It's five times one plus five times one. It's ten kilonewton meters. I rigged it, but you can see, so this is the 10 kilonewton meter applied load from the bending moment, and this is effectively how your um, section resists that force by going one side into compression and one side to tension and creating an internal moment couple, which, when you solve for, is equal to this. So the system's in equilibrium. Uh, I hope that's clear. Uh, if not, I guess email me, I'll try to re explain it to you or something. But that's how members resist flexural loads. So now, how does this apply to the boat? Well, our boat is not a square. It's a cool kind of U shape like this. And in my analysis, I, anal I analyze it like a U. But for this, let's just pretend it's a C. Because it'll just be a little bit easier. Right? So this is like if I looked at the boat, this is the boat, and I cut it like this. Well, this is where a thing and this repeals it. Now we'll know we'll have a bending in this member. So this maybe let's not draw this line, let's give it some thickness here. So, when it starts to bend, same thing like the square block, this bottom part of the bow is going to start going into tension, and now the top part is going to go into compression. Now, uh, I guess the first thing that we need to find is the location of the neutral axis. Now, for some reason, I don't know why, but a lot of people think the neutral axis is just always in the middle. Because I think the bending always happens around the middle. And I guess the straight, the strain would look like that, and the stress would look like that too. But that's not true. You have to remember the neutral axis is where the deformation is zero, and now that occurs when you get the same amount of compression, like that force there that we got, is the same as the amount in the tensile zone. Uh, I know that wasn't really clear, but just bear with me. Um, so, because we have more area here, um, the neutral axis actually be a bit lower here. It can be somewhere like that. And now, if we look at the strain, well, at least I can be constrained today. This neutral axis. Well, the bottom is going to have say value because of the geometry. Maybe this is like five or something. And this is a lot more. Ten, let's say. So because the because there's a lot more area here, uh, the neutral axis is lowered and you get kind of this relation in the strain. So now if we take the stress, well the stress times the modular elasticity, let's say this will be like ten MPA. And let's say this is five MPA. Okay. 
Now you're going to see why this works as a neutral axis. Um, so you can tell that this value is a lot smaller than this value, but why will the forces, so the, you know, try to clear. Uh, we have to, if we went back, I had, back to what I used to have here, I had, I think it was five I had here, and five, or ten, no wait, or five. Pretty much the compression value had a certain number, and the, well this is the tensile, oh my god, I'm all lost. Okay, the tension value had, the tension zone had a value in kilonewtons, and the compression zone had a value in kilonewtons. And I took some HM out of moments about the neutral axis, and it was in equilibrium. Well, I didn't say it, but we also had summation of forces in x equal to zero is equilibrium too, right? Statics always applies, because if not, something would move, right? If we didn't have this equilibrium in that direction either, the, the boat would be moving forward because of the bending. That's just weird. It doesn't happen. So now, you guys can see that the stresses are not the same, but this area is, well, let's say this area is 10, and this area is 5. So in the end, though, just because, in the end, the forces here will equal the same. So this will be a 50, and this will also be 50. And then we can, well, the neutral axis is a lot lower, though. It's over here. So we can find the moment resistance of this section by taking this distance times 50 and this distance times 50. And that'll be the resistance of this C section. Now, maybe watch that part a couple times to make sense because it makes sense in my head, but I didn't really go through how many teaches to you guys, so I'm kind of just talking. So, yeah, listen to it again. Maybe it'll make things clear. Like I said, if you have any questions, email me. You can see, like, that's why the neutral axis is in the middle. Because if the neutral axis is in the middle, these areas aren't the same. So this will become, let's say, 7 MPA and 7 MPA. But because these areas aren't the same, this value would be a lot smaller than this value. And then your summation of forces in X would not be equal to 0. And your boat would be moving forward to the bending. That doesn't make any sense. So that's why the neutral axis is a bit lower. To create equilibrium. Now, the boat itself. What do we have in the boat? And I guess the program I wrote to do this. So, the key issue here is, maybe before I raise this, the key things we need to do if we want to analyze a non-simple section, so not a square, is we need to determine, I guess, one, the location I don't know why I'm writing this, of the neutral axis, and the area above, and below the neutral axis. Right? Because if we have those two things, and the strain is just geometry, we can calculate the resistance of the section. Now, the boat is not a C-section like that. The boat is more round. That's bad. My beautiful artistic skills. But you can kind of see, though, that the neutral axis will still be kind of over here. So now I wrote a code that figures out the neutral axis and creates the MMR. So let's start looking at that, I guess, before I explain what it does. Uh, i got to find it, though. Uh,
Okay. So this is the code. Very nice, yes, I know. Um, so the easiest way I thought of doing this is I need to figure out a way to easily calculate the area between these sections. So the first thing I did is I asked Nick in the AutoCAD to give me the coordinates of the middle section of the boat and then he offset all the coordinates by half an inch which was supposed to be design thickness and he gave me all those coordinates too. So I have two sets of coordinates that were the interior hull and the exterior hull because now unlike the other analysis I actually need the thickness of the boat and its location to create it. And the analysis I performed is only on a half section because then by symmetry I can just multiply by two. Anyways, so I had all these dots but now to find the area between dots is it's not that complicated but it's a pain in the ass because you have to like look for all the dots and find the differences and find the area and distances so I just avoided that so what I did is I created an equation which models the, the dots so I had this is what I had I had dots like this and a second set of dots like this and using MATLAB I created a function that takes this shape and a function that takes this shape. It was like a triple Gaussian something or whatever. So this was the function here. This mean us thing over here with these coefficients was the interior profile and the same form with these coefficients, the second profile. Now I'm not some kind of mathematical wizard genius who just looks at things and goes, oh yeah, a triple exponential form would look really great for that. Um, what I did, maybe I can still do it, is if you run MathLab, let's run this, no, I'll run it twice, I'm stupid, I always make that mistake. Let's wait a bit. Right? So, mm, wait, it's going twice. Okay. So, here we go. It's not even the, the most accurate thing. These are the plots that Nick gave me from AutoCAD. Now, they look like curves, but they're not. They're actually a whole bunch of little dots and then math joins the lines. And these are the curves that I fitted to the shape. Now the way I did that is if you load the program, so what you guys are going to have to do first off is create these profiles, that's these sections here. So one for the interior and one for the exterior. And then run the program and what you need to do is you need to use the curve fit tool. So you just click CF tool and it'll open this window, hopefully. which is part of the statistics toolbox in MathLab, which helps you fit data. So profile 1x could be the x, and profile 1y could be the y. I'll plot up here. Here we go. So you can see, if I want to try to fit this data with a one degree polynomial, i.e. a straight line, tough cookies. Um, so what I used was exponential with two terms. I thought I had more. No, it was Gaussian, I think. Yeah, third order Gaussian. See, that's what I created, and it looked pretty good. So I just copy pasted these co coefficients here and threw them in here. So you bring in your new profiles, throw them in here, and that'll be the new boat. So now. Now that I have these profiles, what does the boat do? Well, it pretty much finds the neutral axis by finding where the equilibrium is. So, first step is it'll start putting the neutral axis here. And then it'll say, okay, everything under this is in compression, or everything under this is in tension, everything under on top of this is in uh, compression. So, it'll take this area. Well, first off, it's going to say, okay, this is zero, and the strain 
Actually, I never even calculate the strain. I just say that the um, since this had some tension, I said this was about 3 MPa based on John's numbers. We have to confirm this number with Julia for her tensile strength of her concrete. And then it would just make a line like this, multiply it by this whole area, and then check compared to the tension value. So that's a bad example because there's nothing in the compression, I mean, sorry. So it would say, no, this is not where the neutral axis is. Then it'll lower it, obviously in a smaller increment, and it'll retry the analysis. So now the neutral axis is here. It'll set the bottom to 3. It'll do the geometry. So maybe not because the geometry is 1.5. It'll calculate the force here. Calculate the force here. And be like, are these the same? Yes, no, no, okay. Lower it to here. Put the neutral axis down here. Set this to 3. Maybe this will be like 7. Calculate this. Calculate this. Hey, look, they're equal. Okay. Take the moment from this distance and this distance, and that's your MR. And that's how you do, I guess, an elastic uh, analysis of the concrete section. Now, this doesn't include the contribution of the mesh, which is another program that we can talk about. But right now, rumor has it that we're not going to put a mesh in the boat. Um, so we'll look at that once you guys do just the um, analysis without the mesh. Uh, I think with the thickness we have this year, we could probably get away with not putting a mesh in the boat. Uh, I know last year my analysis at half an inch said no, this is not good. Well, actually, I have it here. Um, let's see. I have. Uh, now my printer just turned on. You guys probably hear that. I have a moment resistance. I think it's that value of 480 uh, newton meters. And I think the bending moment was 1.2 kilonewton meters or something, so that didn't work. Um, yeah, but if you guys are curious to how you'd incorporate the mesh, pretty much what you do is you assume that the concrete here cracks and that it has no more tensile contribution. And you just make this arrow the strength of the mesh. So let's say this is like 15 or something. And then you just try to lower the neutral axis until you get enough compression to compensate for this 15. It's kind of ghetto, but yeah, we can talk about that more when we get to that point. So that's it for that. If you have any questions, email me. That would be glad to answer them. Yeah, uh, that's it.